Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the roars as we talk about the stupid stuff going on in the world of technology so I can fund a SiliconDojo.com free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on AI computer vision using something called the Moon Dream model. Uh, next week, we have a class coming up on uh, pushing AI to the edge using Raspberry Pis a few weeks from now. We have more and more classes coming down the pike. If you're interested, take a look at SiliconDojo.com to see what our current schedule is. And if you want to support free technology education, there is a donor box link down below and uh, I got some good news. I got some good news. People are like, Eli, Eli, I don't, I don't like your videos anymore. You, you, you never talk about anything good. I'm just like, <laughs> it's not my fault. It's 2025. <laughs> I, can, I can take blame for a lot of things. <laughs> There's a lot of things. You can be like, you know the problem with Eli and I'll accept it. You can't blame me for it being 2025. It is not my fault. Not much good is coming out of this particular year. I come here to talk about the world of technology. The world of technology is as it is. Anyways, I do think that this is interesting and this is something to keep uh, keep your eye on, especially if you are going to be building things uh, uh, with uh, for AI, with AI, and deploying them into your systems, into your infrastructure. One of the big problems that we have right now with AI is that there's this idea that AI is what is called a mature tech stack. So a mature tech stack is like LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. I guess that's probably a geriatric uh, stack at this point in time. But anyways, there's stacks where you know how to do it, right? If you're going to go out there and build a website, you know you're going to use HTML, you're going to use JavaScript, you're probably going to use CSS, and that's how you build a website, right? There was a time, there was a time, there was XHTML and SHTML, and there was ASP. Like, if you go back 20 years ago, like, building a website, you're like, what the fuck? Now, now you basically know what to do. And the issue that we get to in the AI world is with so much push on, on these massive cap, CapEx expenses, there's this idea that there's, it's a mature stack and we, we understand how to deploy AI, how to build and deploy AI. And the fact of that matter is, we just don't. I mean, I'm not even, be, I'm not even being mean or snarky about it. It's just, it's just a new tech stack. We, li we, li we literally do not know how we're going to be building things um, th two years from now. Like I see this with, uh, oh, Moondream. So Moondream Dream is this AI computer vision model. Fucking fabulous. If you know how to troubleshoot systems, Moon Dream is the model for you. Oh, it's a fucking disaster. Jesus Christ. Anyways, I started, I, I played around with Moon Dream like last year, a little over a year ago. It's great. It, it's this model that allows you to push computer vision to the edge. So edge devices, things like uh, Raspberry Pis and that type of thing. Phenomenal. The big thing with it that makes it really cool with Moon Dream is it gives you XY coordinates. So a lot of vision models out there, they'll tell you, they'll tell you uh, what is in the picture. They'll tell you if something is in the picture, uh, you know, they'll do a caption, they'll do all that kind of thing, but they can't give you X, Y coordinates. Uh, so there's um, a computer vision framework called OpenCV. And so if you train it, on finding things, uh, it will actually give you the XY coordinate. So with an XY coordinate, what's really cool is you can build robots. So you can basically say, if, if the XY, right, XY. So if X is below this, uh, if it's below this, right, so basically it's here, then, then turn the motors this way, right? If it's above this, then turn the motors this way. That's what XY coordinates do. So you can create a pan tilt, uh, pan tilt cameras. So you can create autonomous pan tilt cameras because when it sees the face, it doesn't just know that there's a face in the shot. It knows where the face is in the shot. And so literally what it'll try to do is it'll try, it'll automatically try to get the face in the middle. They're just fucking phenomenal. You can do a lot of other things with security deals. So basically like if you have people and there's supposed to be a line or let's say a fence, so if people are detected on one side of the fence, that's fine. But if they're detected on the other side of the fence, right, that would be X, Y coordinates. Uh, if person here, don't do anything. If person here, if person and X, Y is here, then set off an alarm, that type of deal. Fucking fact. Again, Moon Dream is, is amazing. <laughs> it's like Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like Europe. Had so much hope for Moon Dream. <laughs> oh, it breaks my heart though. Holy shit. The documentation is so bad. They, uh, I guess they, I guess about a year ago they decided to re 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 redesign their system, which is fine, whatever. Uh, but then they didn't decide to, to update their documentation. I shit you not. You copy paste 
their code from their fucking website and the code the code just doesn't just fail it literally says you're feeding it variable names when it shouldn't be getting variable names it's like endpoint equals whatever the endpoint is supposed to be and it's like you're giving me a variable for endpoint and there shouldn't be any variables here you know dude i just copy and pasted your code fuck but anyways that's one of the big problems that i see with artificial intelligence is that it's moving so quickly uh, even the documentation doesn't keep up we talk about this with ai drift uh, open ai seems to be getting better with this but one of the big problems that i had uh, when i was doing these classes so open ai i've been doing these types of ai classes in person for three years now and uh, one of the interesting things is there's this thing called ai drift where basically as ai is continuously trained and updated uh, basically the responses the, the responses that you get back start to change it's not simply that you get better responses it knows more but even the same questions you asked previously now you get slightly different responses on all right and i had that problem before with uh, teaching open ai's api where i create python code we do the class everything works great basically I put it on the shelf for a few months. We do other classes. I pull it off the shelf. Uh, basically, I just run the code again because I'm a computer person, so I want to verify everything is working properly. It should. Code hasn't fucking changed in four months. System shouldn't have changed. And all of a sudden, all of my code is failing out. Why? Because the AI model has drifted slightly, right? You're parsing based off of expected responses. And now the expected responses don't look like, or the responses you're getting are not how you expect them to look, and everything kind of goes to hell. And so this is one of those things to be thinking about when you start dealing with artificial intelligence and start deploying AI, most importantly deploying AI, is the question is, is when somebody goes to support this horse crap two years from now, what is that gonna look like, right? There, there, is, a diff there is a difference between what you can do in the lab, what you can deploy at scale, and what you can maintain at scale, right? The real, the real trick is building stuff that you can maintain. So that's what that's one of the things that's kind of interesting here with agents. So we are whole, we are told agents are the future of AI. Yeah, sure, fine, whatever. I guess I can't be really too snarky with agents. When we talk about agents, what agents are is basically where they took they take inputs with an AI and LLM based system, and then they can take actions for you. So hey, uh, book me, book me a haircut. Right, and so the system knows that you like your haircuts in the afternoon. The system knows uh, your favorite barber is Sue. Uh, you also like Bob and you hate Fred, right? And so it will go in, it will see when there is an available uh, opening. Basically, if there is Sue in the afternoon, it'll automatically book you. If there is Sue in the morning, it might come back and say, hey, um, Whatever, I have a, there's an appointment slot for Bob at two o'clock this afternoon, or there's an appointment for Sue at 11 if you would prefer. I'm like, fuck, I really prefer Sue. Book me the appointment with Sue. So that's kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about with AI agents. The problem is, again, with all this stuff, is it's a stack. You gotta build it. There's code. It doesn't work magically. And so uh, there's, there's new, these uh, new a, uh, agent frameworks that are out there, things like MCP, Model Context Protocol. I do believe that came from Anthropic. And basically companies right now are just trying to figure out how do you, kind of how do you build that agent stack? Uh, so coming from Ars Technica, Big Tech joins forces with Linux Foundation to standardize AI agents. And so this is going to be very important for us. It's like when we do REST APIs. So REST APIs are how your code can go and talk to other servers and bring information back. Uh, when you say things like REST, in 2025, it doesn't really matter. If you say REST API, everybody basically knows what you're talking about. It looks like a GET request, and then you get JSON response. That's REST. All right, here's the thing. If you go back 20 years ago, right, there used to be so there was SOAP, and there's a whole bunch of other AI, uh, API things. Um, and so one of the questions was, is basically, <clears throat> like, how do you design it? Like, you know you need to make a request, and you know you need to get some kind of parsable response back, but should the parsable response be in JSON? Should the parsable response be in, uh, be in XML? with which what was SOAP was. Uh, should the parsable response be in some other kind of data format? Like it's just that kind of like standardization. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I mean, JSON is better than XML for a lot of reasons, but 
if we still got eggs and who the fuck really cares, right? But the important thing is that you standardize on something. And that's one of the big issues we have with AI deployments right now is a lot of this stuff isn't standardized, especially for AI agents. So if we have big tech coming together just to start creating some standardizations, that could be a valuable thing. That's the other thing that you need to be thinking about as an actual technology professional is keeping up to date on these kind of standardization practices so you can start building towards the standards of tomorrow. We may not know exactly what the standards of 2027 are gonna look like, but we're starting to get the idea of where we're going. So if you build based off of what seems to be the roadmap for where we're going, it'll be a lot easier to implement the standardizations as everything gets standardized. If you, if you keep just doing whatever it is that you do, that is going to be much more difficult uh, to get standards compliance in a couple years. Uh, Big Tech has spent the past year telling us we're living in the era of AI agents. Yes, Big Tech has spent the last number of years telling us we're in the era of XYZ. We're in the era of VR. We're in the era of blockchain. We're in the era of NFTs. Maybe we're in the era of AI agents. Uh, but most of what we've been promised is still theoretical. Yep. As companies race to turn fantasy into reality, they've developed a collection of tools to guide the development of generative AI, a cadre of major players in the AI race, race including Anthropic, Block, and OpenAI, have come together to promote interoperability with the newly formed Ag uh, Agentic AI Foundation, AAIF. This move elevates a handful of popular technologies and could make them a de facto standard for AI development going forward. Right? I kind of think about this, like this might be probably not the HTML5 moment of the AI world, but that was the thing, like, like before HTML5 got standardized, y'all don't know. <laughs> yeah, y'all don't know the pain of web development in an HTML4 world. Tags, tags that you just use nowadays and don't think twice about didn't necessarily exist before. So this might, this might actually kind of be like that HTML5 moment where things just kind of start getting standardized. Uh, the AAIF, which is part of the nonprofit Linux Foundation, has been launched to govern the development of three key uh, AI technologies, Model Context Protocol, MCP, Goose, and Agents.md. I will say, just because they are starting to standardize things, they still might not know exactly what things get standardized on. That's one of the big things with open source, like there's this idea like with open source, like, oh, this is gonna be open source or whatever, and we're all gonna standardize. And sometimes like five things get standardized on. <laughs> One of those things just to be careful about. Uh, MCP is probably the most well-known of the trio, having been open sourced by Anthropic a year ago. The goal of MCP is to link AI agents to data sources in a standardized way. Anthropic, and now the AAIF, is fond of calling MCB a, quote, USB port for AI. Rather than creating custom integrations for every different database or cloud uh, storage platform, MCP allows developers to quickly and easily connect to any MCP-compliant uh, server. So think about this as sort of like an API for AI. It's not an API, it's an MCP, but it's kind of like, right? So the idea is that you can, you can connect to this thing. If you connect to this thing and you provide it the right stuff, it'll go and get you whatever you need. Uh, expanding use of MCP might help users customize their AI experience. For instance, the new Pebble Index 01 ring uses a local LLM that can act uh, on your voice notes and it supports MCP for user customization. Uh, Goose, which was, uh, I, I had not heard of Goose before. Goose, which was contributed uh, to the project by Square Owner Block, launched in early 2025. 20, this is a customizable open source agent for coding. It is designed to run locally or in the cloud and use any LLM you choose. It also has built-in support for MCP. Might, meanwhile, agents.md, uh, .md is for a markdown file, uh, comes from OpenAI, and it's also a very recent arrival in the AI sphere. OpenAI announced the tool this past August, and now it's also part of the AAIF. Agents.md is essentially a markdown-based readme for AI coding agents to guide their behavior in more predictable ways. Regardless, everyone in the AI industry seems to be on board. In addition to the companies adding their tools to the project, the AI AIF has support from Amazon, Google, Cloudflare, Microsoft, and others. The Linux Foundation says it intends to shepherd these key technologies forward in the same openness, but it may end up collecting a lot of nascent AI tools uh, at this rate. That's the other thing too, is a lot of, for a lot of these tech companies, even for a lot of tech professionals, most of us really don't give a fuck. <laughs> Let's be honest. Like we like arguing. Look, we're assholes. We like to argue. 
are really stupid things. But at the end of the day, we also don't really care that much. <laughs> we, we get very heated about arguments that really don't matter. Anyways, but the important thing is that there's just some system. Just give me some fucking system. Just tell me how to do it, right? And so the other thing that's interesting with this, whether it's agents or whether it's MCP or whatever else, is as, right, as these, as these standards start getting solidified, right, what I talk about with legacy, you have a lot of companies out there that are just trying to figure out a standard way to do something. They don't really give a fuck how they do it. So they, they start implementing the, these, uh, these standards into how they're building stuff. And then as more of these standards get implemented into people's products, then larger companies, they start integrating those standards into their project products so that everything just starts working uh, ever more uh, seamlessly. Um, like I talk about this like with, uh, with Python, right? So back in the day. So PHP used to be the language. So in web 2.0, so in web 2.0, basically dynamically built websites, you had a database backends, that type of thing. PHP worked very, very well for infrastructure that you owned. If you own the infrastructure, whether it was an email server, whether it's a web, uh, a, uh, file server, whether it was a database server, whatever else, PHP was awesome for what you owned. But then we got to the service-oriented architecture world, right? Service-oriented architecture world is everybody's offering these different services. Twilio offers SMS services. SendGrid offers email services. You can connect to Twitter. You can connect to Facebook. You can connect to all these different, right? And so that's where you start getting this API world. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? With those APIs, for whatever reason, most of the people that created the APIs decided the programming language that they would support first and for a long time only was Python, right? So here's the thing, right? You have been, you have been writing PHP code for a decade. Right, you didn't, you didn't want to learn Python. You didn't give a crap about Python. You were not like, oh wow, Python's amazing. But all of a sudden your boss comes in and your boss is like, yeah, uh, we want to be able to automatically post to Twitter, uh, build that. You're like, all right. And then you go and you start reading the API documentation and it's only for Python. And so therefore you just realize you have to learn Python. And then you go to Twilio and it's only in Python. You go to SendGrid and it's only in Python. And you go to CatFacts. Yeah, whatever. It's only in Python. And so what you realize, and that's the thing, is like, so these, these companies for their APIs initially standardized on Python. And that was one of the things that really gave Python the boost back somewhere around the 2010 time frame, right? It's just, it's just if you want to build, if you want to build, if you want to implement these resources into your projects, you need Python. Don't, don't give a fuck how you feel about it. That's how it is. So I think that's kind of an interesting thing here when you start looking at the AAIF and what they're trying to do here is as they start standardizing, you may not like MCP. I'm not going to get in that argument. You may not like some of these other things, but if that simply becomes a standard, if it, whether it's AWS or Azure or Linode or DigitalOcean or Bob's Computer Shop, right? If they all use an MCP endpoint, guess what, buckos? You're going to be learning how to use MCP endpoints, right? Uh, so I think that's kind of one of the interesting things uh, taking a look at here. On the whole, on the whole, I don't, I don't think it's bad. I'm going to have to, again, one of, one of our classes for digital uh, sil Silicon Dojo uh, will, be, um, will be on MCPs. I know a bit about MCPs. I can probably build an MCP if you put a gun to my head. Um, I will have to get more into it in order to do the classes. So I don't know. May maybe in a month or two, I might have a different opinion about MCP. But right now, a curs cursory view of it. Yeah, seems fine enough. Seems fine enough. So, so yeah. So, what do you think about? What do you think about standardizing, basically, uh, how to communicate uh, with agents? What do you think about the Linux Foundation getting involved here? Do you think the Linux Foundation is it, it's a good thing? Is this is this still the foundation that brings a little smile to your heart, or is it like many many things in 2025? You're like, eh. I remember when I was excited about the Linux Foundation. <clears throat> Not so much anymore. You realize it's gotten big. I was talking with somebody who's an employee of the Linux Foundation. They're dealing with a lot of projects. They're dealing with, they deal with a lot of projects and they get a lot of outside funding. 
I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. What do you think about this? Put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. Do remember I do these videos in order to support Silicon Dojo, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We have a class coming up on computer vision with the Moon Dream model. Uh, next week, we have classes coming up on pushing AI to the edge with Raspberry Pis in a few weeks. If you're interested, take a look at siliconDojo.com to see what our schedule is. Uh, uh, if you want to support uh, the free education, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.